After a long war, the dwarf city Stonewatch is in ruins. Hidden in its depths is the gold-filled King's Gift, which has collapsed and been lost to the dwarves. Journey into the mines and collect gold and treasure while seeking the four pieces of the map which will lead you back to the King's Gift and make you rich beyond your wildest dreams. At the start of each game, pick one of the four dwarf boards to play as. Each one has a different movement and health values. Throughout the game, you'll be able to purchase weapons, which you'll be able to use to mine and attack, shields and armor to defend yourself, and skills and items to help you as you search for the map. It is important to note that you will have to purchase according to the dwarven class you have chosen, in this case the hero, and you have to purchase in tier order. For example, you have to have tier 1 and tier 2 before you can purchase tier 3 weapons. You start each round by setting up a map. You will start the game at level 1, but after that you have the choice of going up or down one level. 1 is going to be the easiest with very few rewards, and 4 is going to be the hardest with lots of rewards and monsters. Each map will tell you how to set up the board. They may have stone, granite, and fire as gold, which we place on the legend. It will also tell you what rewards, exits, monsters, and map pieces that you will place inside the loot bag. These are the only rewards that will be available to gain this round. So set up, we have the Forgotten Shrine, so it tells us we have fire in the center of the board, and then there's stones surrounding each of the entering phases for the dwarves, and some in the middle. Once your map is prepared and your dwarf has been equipped, you are ready to adventure. There are three phases that will take place. First of all, you may move any number of spaces found on your player board, in this case, four. You can also rotate your dwarf to move to face any obstacle without using a movement. Next, you may mine. Tunnels, as you probably know, are full of rubble, but you carry a weapon which can help you break it down. You must be facing the stone you want to mine and then take the dice shown on your weapon. Roll them to see how many pieces of rock you break through. If you completely break down a stack, you may take one loot from the bag and put it on your player board or drop it where the rock previously stood if your board is full. If you pull an exit token, it must be placed on the board. And if a monster token is drawn, they will enter the board, but we'll talk about that in just a minute. If you finish mining a stack of rocks and still have extra damage from your dice, you may move to face another rock and continue to mine until your damage runs out. Granite is too hard for you to mine unless you have a special ability, item, or weapon that says otherwise. And if there's an uncovered loot token next to a dwarf, you may pick up one during your turn as long as you have to restore it. Monsters have their own board which will track the type you can discover. Check where the crystal is and check the color underneath it, in this case, green. You will then roll the purple dice to see which of the six monsters on the green track will come and face you. Place the monster you've chosen out. You will have a mini that will go in the spot that you just mined. Grab its matching player board and place the tokens on its movement and its health. The player to the left of the dwarf who found it will roll the dice for the monster and you can find that at the top of the board you can also find any ability that the special monster might have. Lastly, you can attack. You may not mine and attack in the same turn unless you have a skill or item that says so. You must be facing the monster or dwarf you are attacking and be adjacent to their spot. You will then roll the dice from your weapon card to see how much damage you are delivering. The defending character moves their health down by that many. If their health reaches zero, they have been knocked out and you may take two tokens from their board. A knocked out dwarf is removed from the map and will not return until the next round. If a monster's health is, is, reaches zero, they have been killed and you can take all the loot they are holding. You can drop up to two loot from your board to make space if you have to. Play continues in this way until one of three end round triggers is met. First, a player steps on an exit token, which will immediately end the round, making that dwarf the first player next round. Second, if there is only one dwarf left standing and there are no monsters on the board, this dwarf gets the remaining lo loot on the map equal to the number of players in the game. For example, a two-player game, you get two loot. This dwarf will also become a starting player in the next round. Third and last, if, you are, if there are no dwarfs left standing, the last dwarf to have been knocked out by a monster, obviously, will become the next starting player, but they cannot gain any loot that was left on the board. The game ends when one player finds four ancient scroll tokens and turns them into ancient scroll cards. This is done between rounds when players are given the chance to spend any gold they have collected to upgrade weapons, shields, items, and anything else. Do you have what it takes to brave the depths beneath? If you do, check out the link to the Kickstarter that I've put in the description. And as always, happy gaming!